with, you know, a tree? Is it a, a curb? Uh, edge of grass? And you know what comes in handy now is in the back of the field book, in the back of the packet, remember we have those four or five pages? Let me pull them up. And we have four or five pages of uh, abbreviations that Caltrans uses. Oh, good. What pages? It's probably all the way in the back. 145, maybe? 135. 135. So they start on 136. Right? We have. So let's see curve. Where's the curve? Top. It's probably like top of curve, bottom of curve. So let's see. TC might be. Uh, yeah, TC is top of curve, right? And you have a top of curve and a bottom of curve, right? Because they're probably six inches. The elevation is going to be different. And what's the bottom of curve? Curve. No, it's just a curve. Curve. Just a curve. So, be. so you can use this abbreviation. You don't have to write the full description out. Oh, okay, okay and so let's put a column. We definitely want a column for a uh, point sighted, right? Okay, then what else do we want? We want a horizontal angle. Horizontal angle. Distance. <laughs> horizontal angle and horizontal distance. And so, so point one, two, three, four, all the way down, right? Elevation. And elevation. We have azimuth. Oh, yeah. No, we don't need azimuth because we're not shooting off the north. So we can't use the word azimuth. Zenith. Right? We're just using horizontal. No, zenith is this angle. Right, right. Right? So we're just using horizontal angle off the baseline. So it may be that the first, maybe the first uh, point you want to call is B for baseline. Baseline point. And the horizontal angle then would be zero, right? If I'm shooting a baseline, I'm calling it a baseline, that would be zero. And the horizontal distance would be whatever the horizontal distance happens to be from me to the from me to the, um, that point, and the elevation is whatever elevation I find. And then everything else is being measured from here. So if this is the zero, then when I turn 120 degree, three degrees, 50 minutes, 15 seconds, I know I'm coming off of B. Allison? So the first column be one? Okay, so we're thinking now. So do we need any more information? I think we got it. Point sighted, horizontal angle, horizontal distance, elevation comments. That's five. I don't think we need, we don't have anything else we need. So we can make that first point. We can make that first column, you know, the point that we're at. So what did they call, we usually call it monument, right? So you're set up on point X. And more room for your yeah, I don't think, you, yeah, you could do that if you want. So instead, we could not have this column and we can say, you know, set up. Well, actually, we don't have the right set up, right? We just draw the little tripod mm -hmm. at X. Um, don't we still need a column for, like, for Z if for the element so we can calculate the uh, Oh, yes, we are. You're right. Yeah, so we're going to have to have this. Yeah, but isn't, isn't that something that's directly uh, recorded from the toll station? Um, we're going to talk about that because it depends on, you can imagine it depends on how high your telescope of your instrument is and how high the um, prism pole is. Yeah, vertical right? distance. So you're right. Elevation is not what's going to be given. <clears throat> oh, and you also need a benchmark, don't we? Right? So after the baseline, we're going to need a benchmark to know to get the elevation from. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're going to need a, a, a vertical distance. 
that's what we're going to need. We don't need a, ang a vertical angle. We're going to use a vertical distance. And I'll show you how we calculate it. Good point, Stephen. So now we do need six columns. So we can't put in a column for where, the, where we are located. Thanks. Would your point B be a benchmark also? Well, maybe I'm using a bad word. Maybe I shouldn't say, uh, you know, B is for my baseline. Or B -A. Just put B. Or B A. Okay. What, about, what about control point? Control point would be fine. You could use whatever you want to use. But, uh, I, well, I wouldn't use control point because I'll tell you why in a little bit. But the, the whole purpose of putting on that second line of ent uh, entry of BM is to, if we were only interested in actually knowing what the actual elevation is, right? That's the Well, we're, we're going to need to know what the elevation of the benchmark is, and we're going to need to know the vertical distance to the benchmark. Vertical distance. <clears throat> and the ver we're going to need these three pieces of information to calculate this. Well, I don't, I'm, what I'm saying is on the bench, so the benchmark we're saying is something that it's like a one of those GIS little tags or anything, something like that, right? Okay. Where the elevation is known. We know the elevation at the benchmark, but so, I have to cite the elevation to find out what the change in V is, the vertical distance is. And, right, remember rod readings, right? We uh, went from yeah. the benchmark, right. we needed a rod reading, to the new point, we needed a rod reading. Our vertical distance is like our rod reading. So we need a, ver a vertical distance, a rod reading too, but we're not using a rod. We're using the prism pole. So we need the V, the vertical distance, to our benchmark, and we also need the vertical distance to every point. I think what he means is like, we'll just name our benchmark our own height, whatever height we want. We won't use like a known elevation benchmark. We won't use like a pin on the screen that's known elevation. We are going to. Going You're to going to be on. out at the harbor and there'll be benchmarks you're shooting off of. Kind of well, nice. I, I guess yeah. what I'm saying, maybe there's there should be a column, or well, or at least an entry somewhere for a height of instrument because I guess I guess I don't understand. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm wrong. No, 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 it's fine. But I think the ver the vertical distance to me, the way I understand it, on the BM okay. line, the vertical distance should be zero. Okay, so let me um. Unless since, that's implying some kind of height of instrument. Since we're talking about this, and since you're asking questions, let's jump to that part. Okay, so we're going to go back in the field book, I mean in the, the packet, to um, what page were we on before? Oh, with the 59 or 58. 57 as our data, state our bottom line. Okay. okay, here. Okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> what the page is entitled, Calculation of the Elevation Using the Total Station and a Prism. So I have a bunch of scenarios here. And what I'm doing is I'm deriving the equation you're going to use. I'm on page 61. Yeah, so I'm deriving the equation, but the way I'm deriving it is I want to show you the different scenarios to get the right answer. Because there's only one, there's only one equation. So here's my... My first situation is I have my instrument at a lower elevation than my benchmark in point one. I'm getting a vertical distance of V. Now, did you notice on the total stations you did heights of trees? You saw the little V, right? Remember the V or the H? Yes. Okay. Um, no. The V or the H, what did the V or the H represent? They represent angles. Angles. So it's not a V. It was, when you saw the little triangle with the vertical part. Okay? So V is that vertical part of the triangle. So I'm reading V from the benchmark, and it's higher, a, a positive value. And then I'm also reading V1, and you notice that V1 is going to be greater than V of the benchmark. Right? Because it's, it's higher. Greater or, let's see. Yeah, it's going to be a greater value. So in order to calculate the elevation of point one, you need to know the elevation of the benchmark plus V1 minus the V of the benchmark. So we probably want to draw that out maybe. Yeah. 